Hey traders, welcome back to Tiffany Trades Options. My name is Tiffany and I love to trade stock options. Today is Sunday, November 13th, 2022. And I wanted to make a video today that sort of piggybacks off of my early assignment on a put credit spread video to talk about what you can do if instead of selling back shares on an early assignment or closing a the long side of a put credit spread, you decide that you want to keep the stock and you want to sell covered calls, but you're not sure what your cost basis is or where your break evens are, and you aren't sure where you sh what strikes you should select when you sell your covered calls. And so I want to go over that and, and how I would calculate those numbers which would then help me decide which strikes to go for. So I'm going to use a couple of examples in my personal uh, Tastyworks margin account. This um, was was my lar second largest account. I, it kind of still is, I guess. Um, but as you can see, all of the stock prices are well below their assigned price. The only position in this account that was not an early assignment was Carnival Cruise Lines. Everything else has been an early assignment in some shape, way, or form in 2022. I recognize that they're all very red and they're all very down and that's just how this market has been. And I'm obviously not in love with seeing all these negative numbers, but I am going to use the assets that have been assigned to me um, in the best way possible, which has been through selling covered calls. And I mentioned that in my update video. But here we go. So let's just use uh, PayPal as an example. I was assigned 200 shares of PayPal at a stock price of 145 per share. So when you type 145 and you times it by 100, that's 14,500. And you multiply that by two, that's 29,000. So it costs me $29,005 to take assignment of 200 shares of PayPal. And so this started off as a put credit spread, which means I had long options also on the position as well. And what I did is I immediately sold back those long options for an additional profit. So that helped bring in some more credit. So I started selling put credit spreads on this. I brought in credit. I rolled put credit spreads. I brought in more credit. I was assigned. I sold back the long options, I brought in more credit, and then the final piece is I've been selling covered calls on this position since assignment. So that's more and more credit. So that's that's lots of different ways to collect credit around a single position. So in this case for PayPal, let's figure out sort of where I can decide what my current break even is, which will help me decide uh, if I should let, let it, the stock go now, if I'm gonna come out with like maybe a little bit of profit, or if I should continue to sell covered calls on it to continue to bring in more credit on the asset if I happen to think that maybe PayPal will recover into the 100s and you know sometime down the road. Um, so what I would do is I would go to the activity. I've already filtered this just for ease of the video, but typically in Tastyworks, you can go up to this little filter button and you can select by symbol and then the start date. And so I started trading options in Tastyworks in 2017. I know for certain that I did not trade PayPal before 2020, but I just am including the full history just to be on the safe side. And then you just click the little CSV, so it'll give you a spreadsheet. And so this will be the entire history of PayPal since I started trading options on it. And the earliest record of any options on PayPal was in... November 2020, looks like I probably made like 100 bucks, um, which is cool. And then I pretty seriously started trading on it in October 2021. I was assigned early on May 23rd, 2022. And then ever since then, I've been pretty much selling covered calls. And so... Assigned early on the 23rd, sold back the long options the next day for a considerable amount of profit. But we'll we'll go over that in just a second. So the cost to purchase the shares was $5. And so if I was going to start off with a blank slate, I would do something like this. And this, this is, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, but if I need to re-say it, my Excel skills are very 
very elementary. Um, it's very much a, uh, a, a plus minus sum function for me over here, and it's not going to get any fancier than this. So just <laughs> appreciate it for what it's worth. But what I would do is I would go to a spreadsheet kind of like this, and I would enter in my PayPal assignment right here. Um, so it was $29,000 and they charged me $5 to take assignment. So I would include that here. So that is the cost to purchase 200 shares. I'm going to hide just these two lines of activity since I've already accounted for it. The total fees this year and last year for trading around PayPal were $85.86. So I'm going to just subtract it right here. And total credit collected on PayPal through put credit spreads, through naked puts, through covered calls is $11,292.13. And this also includes selling back the two long options for a considerable amount of money. So if I was going to start blanks, just do a blank slate and just try to calculate it all, this is what I would do. And I would go and take this number and I would drop it into the spreadsheet. So now my cost basis is $17,712.87. And you're like, cool, what does that mean? I would take this number and I would divide it by 200 shares and it would tell me the current share price that I can get out of PayPal for break even. So this is uh, a sum divided by 200. So my current adjusted cost basis and or break even, it depends on how you like to view it, is $88.56. PayPal is currently going for $91.03. So if I decided that I wanted to sell these sh shares tomorrow, $91.03 times 200 is $18,206. If that was the route that I would take, then it would guarantee me at least $493.13 of profit on the PayPal position, which when you really think about it, at the end of the day, doesn't seem like that much money, especially considering that it's been ex over a year that, that I've been trading on this position. Um, but I th I'm sort of of the view that any profit is good profit, so it's $10 that I didn't have before I started trading options, so kind of like... $493 I didn't have beforehand is just a lot of work. I I wouldn't hate this if I did this tomorrow. Um, I wouldn't love it, obviously, because who likes to take a loss on stock assignment? But like at the end of the day, with the way that this market has been going this year, I think capital preservation for me is probably the most important thing that I'm worried about right now. And so if I wanted to get out of the shares, I could do that for a little bit of profit. Um, I think what more what I'm more likely to do though is I'm going to continue to use the asset and can continue to sell covered calls on it. So I'm going to bring in some more credit. So let's just say if I, we'll just get rid of this real quick. Let's say I hold on to the shares. My cost basis in break even is eighty eight fifty six. If I wanted to sell or roll depends on what's going on. Um, Two covered calls on my 200 shares of PayPal. Uh, I've typically been opening stuff now between, I don't know, 21 and 45 days away. Um, I have I have positions in pre pretty much every expiration except for the same week that I'm trading. So let's just, December 16th, for example. If I wanted to bring in a decent amount of credit, but also keep it above my current cost basis, um, but also wouldn't be sad if it was called away. Let's just say I, I select 97.50 and I want two of these because I have 200 shares. Then I would bring in $283 per covered call. So that's about $566, depending on the fees and depending on your broker. I can add that right here, 566. Let's just say, hypothetically, I opened that brand new position. That would bring in $566. It would further reduce my cost basis from 88 down to 85. And it gives me the potential to have PayPal called away for me at 97.50. So 97.50 would be 19,500. If I wanted to, to get called, if it got that high and I wanted to get called away. 
if that were the case, then it would obviously increase my potential um, overall profit kept. So it really just depends on sort of where you want to take the direction of your position and what you want to do. I personally am think for now, I'm going to continue to sell covered calls on it, but this is how I would enter it. If I decided, hey, 9750 is cool, but maybe I'm going to try to roll it up to 100, I would then take that roll, whatever it costs to buy to close, and realize either that, that gain or that loss, and then I would uh, sell to open new calls and a new expiration at the 100 strike with the hope or potential for PayPal to get to 100 or exceed 100 and maybe get called away at $100 per share. Let's say hypothetically that costs me, I get an extra $25 per covered call to do that. So that's $50. So I'd collect an additional $50 in credit and I would add it here and it would further reduce my cost basis. Just a couple pennies, not a lot, but you know, 25 ish or so cents is not bad. And then I would continue to do this until I offloaded the shares or they were called away from me. So if my next roll gave me, I don't know, $75, you know, my next roll two months from now gave me $75, then that's what I would just keep doing. So this is typically how I would keep track of my credit as well as keep track of my running cost basis or break even. If PayPal got called away from me at the 100 strike, and that's $20,000, then my overall uh, credit kept over the life of the trade will continue to get higher, $2,978.13. So it's very fluid and very flexible and really um, is a matter of your own personal preference. But I am of the mind that we're in this really weird market. It's not. It's no secret that it sucked for a lot of people all year. And I, I'm a, I'm an options seller. I sell for premium and I, and I use theta and delta to my advantage to try to keep as much premium that I've collected as possible. Putting aside the whole realized gains, net liquidity discussion for now, this is a pure premium play for me. And so what that means is I am not afraid to sell options that are below my assigned price. I'm also not afraid to sell options that are below my adjusted cost basis. And I'll give you another example. Uh, Zoom, you know, has been treated similarly to the rest of the tech. It had a really crazy run up and I started trading options on it at probably the inopportune time. And I've accepted the reality that I sold a put on this stock at a strike price that was way higher than what I wanted it for. But that's fine. I'm going to continue to use the asset. So similar price for Zoom. So let's just go through Zoom as an example. $29,005 to take assignment of 100 shares. I'm going to go to my history. I'm going to filter by Zoom instead. Okay, so I started trading Zoom in April 2021. Looks like I was doing iron condors, a combination of condors for a good amount of time. I I do think I remember selling back the long leg of a spread for credit, thinking that Zoom would recover, and it never did, which is a lesson to myself. But in any event, um, there's a lot of history on Zoom over the course of this trade and so um, 29,000 $29, to take assignment. So we're gonna hide that real quick. Fees for Zoom in total $97.51. So total credit collected on the Zoom position since I started trading options on it is $7,745.48. My current break even or adjusted cost basis on the Zoom position is $212.60. And like, holy shit, that's really high, right? Zoom is trading in the 80s. $88.32. And I 
I, I don't know. It would be like a freaking miracle if Zoom got back up to, to the 290 stock price. And I, and frankly, I don't think it ever will. And if it does, it's going to be like a million years from now. I don't, I don't love Zoom. I don't want to be in this position forever. But I'm also not going to wait for Zoom just to kind of continue to go up. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to use the position. I'm going to use the assets accordingly. And I'm going to sell calls. I'm going to sell cover calls on this position until I can continue to bring this number down. So let's say hypothetically, I'm going to open up a new position on December 16th. It look, oh, Zoom has earnings. Looks like the week of Thanksgiving. Um, so that's something to be mindful of. And if it does increase, that'd be awesome. But let's just say hypothetically, December 16th. I want to bring in some premium. I want to give myself room in case the stock does run up. But I don't want to wait years and years and years for it to recover. So I'm going to select a strike that is well below my, my adjusted cost basis, $212. But it's going to be above the current trading price. And so where you make that selection is certainly up to your matter of preference. I typically, if it's a brand new position, would aim for like an 80% probability of profit. Um, like I said, it gives me a little bit of room in case there is a run up. So I would probably say maybe 105 or 110. Let's just say 110 for the sake of being close to 80%. I could sell a covered call on Zoom 33 days away with about an 80% probability of profit and I can collect $197 less whatever fees. So if I collect that $197 and Zoom does not increase to 110, then it's bringing my cost basis down a further couple of dollars. It was at 212 and then an extra 90, 197 in brings it down to 210. Similar to the PayPal theoretical role, let's say I just keep it at 110 I take it to the next month, I collect another 156. Now my cost basis is down about a dollar again. And I'm just gonna keep doing this. And th again, these are all fake numbers. That it's, not, it's hard to say whether or not I actually get this amount of credit without earnings being a factor. But the point being is that it's gonna be a long time before I bring my cost basis fully down to a point where I can get to break even but I'm gonna make use of the asset while I have it. So that's that's an example with Zoom. It's definitely one of the many positions I have now where I'm selling covered calls below cost basis but above current trade price because that's what I have to do to make use of the time that I have in the trade. Um, and I have not had much issue with that this year because I've given myself some room in case of run-ups, but I'm also not yet convinced that we're out of the inflation federal interest rate hike stuff um and i don't know how long that's going to take but it might take a while or it might continue to take a while because it's already been almost a year which is still blowing my mind um so i'm just going to keep doing what i'm doing and that's what i am doing on zoom right now let's do another example Uh, we'll use Square. Square is a, another good example. So I've been in Square a little bit longer. I uh, started trading it in September 2020. Looks like a good combination of probably put spreads and looks like some calls in there as well. Um, okay, so I was assigned... Square on July 27th, 2022. That was an early assignment on a January 2023 expiration. So that's eh, six-ish months away. Not totally surprising, but I took the assignment at a share price of 200. So $20,005 to take assignment of Square. Like the others, I'm just going to hide this two lines of activity. Fees trading on Square for the life of the ticker is $107.02. Total credit collected on Square 
since I started trading on it is $12,191.97. Again, it's down here at the bottom, $12,191.97. I'm pretty sure with this volume of credit that it was a similar thing that I did with Zoom as well as PayPal's where I sold back the long option to bring in a bunch of credit. Um, I have no problem doing this just because that's sort of how I've developed my risk tolerance. But to go back and figure out the cost basis or break even price for square, I'm going to add 12,191. And it looks like my current break even is $78.13. Square is not trading at $78.13 right now. It's at 71.66. If I decided that I was like, oh crap, I don't want to keep Square anymore. I'm going to try and just get rid of it because I need to I need to free up I need the cash. I need to free up the buying power because this account is really um, crunched. Let's just say I, I sold it tomorrow at 71.66. That would give me $7,166 in here. If I hypothetically did this, this would uh, give me a loss on the position of $647.02. So I would take a realized loss on the stock position itself. And then as a net credit collection effort, it would give me, you know, less $647. That, <clears throat> I don't love that. I don't love the idea of doing that. But if that's something that I needed to do, uh, I would also be fine with it because of capital preservation purposes. And if I think about all of this credit that I've collected over the last two years, $12,191, and I only, at the end of the day, on just the single position, took a $647 loss. That wouldn't suck. I've, you can see that there, these are obviously greater losses as they're unrealized gains. But like clearing the book of a position and getting your cash back and only taking 647 bucks, like I, I don't view that as a, as a bad thing, provided that I recognize that this is more of a forest for the trees type scenario for me and not so much a, uh, a harping on any individual trade and you know hyper focused on like or making it so personal like losses aren't so personal to me anymore but like just being personally offended by that that stuff doesn't bother me anymore so I try to look at it in sort of from like the 50,000 foot view um, so when you think about these things uh, as far as a premium collector is concerned, uh, this is sort of what's rolling through my head when I'm when I'm deciding which strikes to select, where I'm going to sell it, how much time I want, whether or not I like the company, whether or not the company's bringing me any premium. Um, and it is. Square's doing a good job bringing me premium. But I'm not planning on selling it tomorrow, so we're going to just keep it as is. And I'm going to continue to make use of the position. And right now, my break-even is 78.13. Baidu is another one I'm going to be in for a while. I have a really high cost basis in the 20, maybe 220s or so. Um, IWM I might be able to get out of in 2023 20, at some point. Uh, I was assigned Facebook meta at like, I don't know, 290 and 250 something or 245. So it's just going to be a long um a long road, which I fully recognize and accept, but that's sort of the nature of the game when you sell premium. Um, if you have any questions about determining your break-evens and your cost basis and where to select your strikes for your covered calls and when you should dump shares, obviously I'm here for you. Um, send me an email, tiffanytradesoptions at gmail.com, or you can drop a comment in the comment section of this video. Um, if you want to see my trades daily, you can join my Patreon, which has a Discord attached, and I post my trades in near-ish to real time. Uh, these are not trade recommendations. I don't send out signals or alerts, and I certainly don't want anyone following my lead because then they'd have a portfolio that looks like garbage. Um... But if you have questions about trading or, or uh, strategy selection, um, I can obviously help. But there's also lots of people in this community who will be more than happy to help you as well because they're all really great people. Um, but that's it. That's that's how I figure out break-evens and cost bases. Another YouTuber, um, Adam from In The Money, did a video on this recently. I'll link his video in the description below. 
his um, spreadsheet is a little bit more um, detailed. I'm not a very good Excel person. I'm not going to get that much detail, but if you want to use his spreadsheet, I think he has a link to his video. Um, okay, that's it. That's the video. Let me know if you have questions. Bye.